Paul, so we have a couple of gas giants, we have a couple of ice giants, we have millions of rocky things. Millions of rocky things, some of which are matter, some of which don't, according to you. Is that it? Is there anything else? Well, there's one category left, which is the ice okay. worlds. Now you not, not the ice giants, ice worlds. Maybe you can classify them together, I'll take your pick. Uh, I mean, they're made of ice, these are made of ice, but okay. these are really ice, okay. like frozen ice. Um, and the biggest of these is Triton, which is a moon of Neptune. Yep. And this is made of ice. The most famous of these is Pluto, yes. which is roughly the same size, a bit smaller, yep. and has now been visited. And these are made of a combination of ices. There's okay. water ice, which probably dominates, and also frozen methane and probably frozen carbon dioxide. On yep. Pluto, you've got frozen nitrogen on the surface, most likely. You just scoop up your air because it's so cold. Um, and various frozen hydrocarbons. Now, do they, are these big enough to have atmospheres? Mostly no. Okay. Uh, mostly very, very tenuous atmospheres. Okay. Sometimes the atmosphere is so cold it will, on summer's days it will evaporate and turn into an atmosphere and then on a winter's night it will freeze and go back onto the surface and join the ice. Okay. We'll talk more about them later. Um, there are also a bunch of things that are sort of like half rock and half ice. Okay. So there's kind of like halfway between the rocky planets like the Earth and the yep. asteroids and the icy things like Pluto and Triton. And the most famous of these would be the Galilean satellites of Jupiter. So Europa, yeah. um, which is believed it might well have under oceans under its icy surface. Um, Ganymede, which is bigger than Mercury, and they're not as heavy. So, so this is bigger than just width-wise of a Mercury, but yeah. it's still not that massive. Yes, so I, I, I don't, don't like the sort of prejudice where we think planets matter and moons don't. I mean, some of these moons are bigger than some of the planets, and in my mind, far more interesting. Agreed. I think a lot of people would uh, agree with that. And so the, the, um, you've got the moons like Ganymede. Um, Titan was a really yes. interesting one. Uh, most of these icy things don't have atmospheres, but Titan's the exception. It partially because it's very big, it's cold because it's Saturn, and it's actually trapped uh, a, a dense atmosphere, as you can see in this picture over here. Um, the space probe um, landed on it yep. and took a picture on the surface, which unfortunately wasn't very interesting. <laughs> um, but with radar scans from orbit, you can see it's actually got lakes of hydrocarbons. Yes. And this is what gets people excited, right? Because this seemingly icy-ish, moony world has an atmosphere, it has liquid, uh, and a lot of it. And so maybe these are the places that we need to look for for things like life. Yes, so in fact, these sort of half rock, half ice things are perhaps the most interesting of anything in the solar system, of course, apart from the Earth, which is really interesting because we live here. And um, but there are also smaller ice things. Okay. Uh, in fact, the, in terms of the number of objects, these small ice things outnumber the rest of the solar system by a large factor. So in terms of okay. mass, they're pretty small. Uh, but just pure volume, per, per quantity. Either volume or the number of these things. Yeah. There are some estimates say there are up to a trillion of these ice So things. even a lot more than the asteroids? Asteroids may be 100 million or so. So yes, a lot more than the asteroids. Okay. And mostly they're out way beyond Pluto. We'll talk about them in great length much often. This is another my research fields, so something I'm very interested in. Now, if they're a small lump of ice out beyond Pluto, we won't see them or know they're there, though we, as we'll learn later, they are out there in absolutely vast numbers. But every now and then, for reasons that are not very well understood, but we'll talk about later, one of these things gets a death wish and plunges in close to the sun and starts melting and gives us these glorious tails. And these, of course, are comets. So, so on their suicide run, they give us some very beautiful pictures yeah. here. And a few of these things have been visited, and you actually see in the middle of them is a lump, and we think of these as a dirty snowball. It's a mixture of rock and ice, yep. probably more ice than rock. It's the first time it comes past. As they orbit over and over, more and more of the ice evaporates, yes. so you end up with just a pile of rock, which may even disintegrate. Okay. So these are the small end of this. So I suppose you can see the icy things, the biggest would be uh, Uranus and Neptune, the middle ones would be like Triton and Pluto and the various moons, and then the small ones would be the comets. So these are the icy thing family. Okay. Um, and people have, uh, this is from the European Space Agency's Rosetta Probe, yep. have come close to actually land on these things, or at least bounced off it. And you can see that there's this dirty snowball, which I mean, is busy melting yeah, and something comes past and blowing cliffs. stuff yeah. off, off on the outside. So that pretty much concludes our tour of the solar system, our lightning tour. So the solar system is, to my mind, basically the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're really careful, the sun and Jupiter. Uh, maybe we'll put Saturn in, it's not that much smaller than Jupiter. Um, and then you've got the icy things, Uranus, Neptune, and a whole bunch of small icy Pluto and Triton and comets, and a whole bunch of rocky fluff down the you middle. You also say the rocky things. What about the rocky things? Oh yeah, well, I suppose we live on one, so it's important to us, even if it's irrelevant in the mass terms. <laughs>